first recipe is traditional pork tempura. It's called pako in Japan, and the crispy butter is the best. It has a different taste than tonkatsu, so be sure to check it out. First, make a sauce to marinate the pork. Put soy sauce, sake, salt and pepper, grated ginger, grated garlic, sugar, and curry powder. Mix well. Curry powder will enhance the flavor, but you can omit it if you don't have it. Please prepare pork loin for this dish. You can leave the pork as is, but the thinner the pork, the crispier and tastier the parko will be. Use a rolling pin to make it thinner. By the way, it's better to cut a little sweet in the fat part of the pork to make it harder for the pork to shrink when fried. Marinate the pork in the sauce you just made. Just soak it for about 10 minutes. If the meat is thick, you should marinate it for 20 minutes. After 10 minutes, remove excess sauce and add a beaten egg. After coating with egg, dust with potato starch. I have done it in the bowl, and the potato starch have stuck to the bowl. I think it would be better to do it on a piece of plastic wrap so that the potato starch would stick to the pork nicely. Even if the pork has a little more potato starch on it, it will still be crispy and delicious. You may be fine without eggs. All you have to do is fry in oil, like a tonkatsu. Fry for 3 minutes on each side. By the way, sauce in which pork is marinated varies from restaurant to restaurant and home to home. A little oyster sauce is also tasty. It turned out nice and crispy. Let's cut them. I try to do it this way because the restaurant is often topped with chopped green onions. It's delicious on its own. But even better when eaten with a sauce made of equal parts rice vinegar and soy sauce. Next one is hamburger steak with homemade pond sauce. This sauce is truly delicious and addictive. I seriously recommend it. First of all, let's prepare onion for hamburger steak. Mince your onion. If the onions are made as fine as possible, they will not crack when the hamburger is cooked and will not release juices. Cook in microwave for 10 minutes. This will sweeten the onions and remove excess water. It must be cool enough before mixing with the meat. I find it easier to cool if you mix the panko and milk first. Mix. I should have used a bigger bowl. Place a cold pack underneath. Next, grate the daikon, Japanese radish, an essential topping. The amount of grated daikon can be small, but we prepare plenty. It's really delicious with meat, adding a very refreshing flavor. It also goes great with the sauce we will making. If you don't have daikon, you can just eat the steak with the sauce without daikon, or prepare 2 to 3 tablespoons of grated onion. I'll tell you how to add it later. Once the onions from earlier have cooled, prepare the ground meat. This is beef plus pork. Add beaten egg. Add the onion mixture. A pinch of cumin. And nutmeg. Add spices of your choice. Add salt and pepper too. Knead well. If you want to make it healthier, you can reduce the amount of meat by half and add drained tofu instead. Or you can use ground chicken, which is also tasty. Form into desired size. Be careful not to make it too thick or it will be difficult to cook. This is about as thick as it gets. Slightly sear the surface over medium heat. Cook for about 2.5 minutes, then turn over. 
Reduce heat to low and cook covered for about 4 minutes. When cooked through, remove from the pan. The two small ones in the front will be frozen and used as a side dish for bento. Once the gray matter has been removed, make the sauce in the pan. Warm with meat juices. Add sake, mirin, soy sauce, rice vinegar, and sugar. I'll boil it down a bit. You can also add grated onion to this sauce. In that case, add it here to heat through. I really wanted to add a little citrus juice, but I forgot to buy some. Add about 1 teaspoon of lemon juice if available. Finally, add a small amount of grated garlic. The combination of ponzu and garlic is my husband's favorite, and he highly recommends it to everyone. Top with shiso and grated daikon. And pour a sauce. We add grated daikon when we eat. Next one is karaage with spicy tomato sauce. This delicious spicy tomato sauce is excellent. A non-spicy version can also be made. First, let's season the chicken. Put grated ginger, grated garlic, sake, soy sauce, and just a little sugar. Mix to blend the flavors throughout the chicken. Soak for about 20 minutes. Next, chop the onion for the sauce. This time, the onions can be a little rough. Stir fry it with olive oil. Add garlic powder. I think minced garlic should be better. Add salt and pepper. Canned tomato, seasoning with consomme, use stock powder or cube, soy sauce, miso paste, and sugar. I'm in the mood for something spicy today, so I'll add Japanese chili pepper, ichimi togarashi. While making karaage, simmer this sauce over low heat. Be careful not to boil down too much. Once the chicken has been seasoned, remove any excess water. You can lightly wipe the water off with paper towel. Then sprinkle a little dusting of potato starch. Too little potato starch is not good, but too much will make the chicken soggy. You may want to add a little at a time, mixing as you go. Spread the chicken skin tightly before placing it in the pan. Fry for 3 minutes on each side first. Finally, fry at high temperature for 30 seconds to 1 minute each for a crispy finish. Karaage is ready. Cook the tomato sauce until it's a little thick like this. Then turn off the heat and add the butter. You should definitely put this in. It increases the umami taste. Taste it here. If you like it less sweet, you can finish it with this. But it tastes even better if you add a little honey. Pour the sauce over the chicken. My husband liked this tomato sauce a lot and wanted to eat this over spaghetti with karaage. Next one is authentic pork steak, tonteki. This is the most common type of pork steak in Japan. It's very easy, you will be surprised at the new taste of pork. First, prepare thinly sliced garlic. Remove garlic spot. Cut the pork like this. This allows it to cook in shorter time. Make the secret sauce in advance. Put sake. Mirin, soy sauce, sugar, oyster sauce, 
and rice vinegar. Mix well. Lightly dust the pork with potato starch. Flour works just fine. This time, since it's not deep fried in oil, the potato starch should be very thin. Dust off excess powder with your hands like this. Out of the pan and add garlic. I try to transfer the garlic flavor to the oil, but I learn no on oil. Cook the pork. Fry over medium heat for 2 minutes each side, trying to get garlic flavor on pork. Turn over it and add the sauce after 2 minutes. Lightly simmer the sauce. The potato starch makes the sauce just a little bit thicker and mixes well with pork. Place the cabbage on the plate and the pork steak. Pour plenty of sauce over the top. You should cut all the way to the top when eating. Next one is beef steak sushi, miso sushi. Want to try sushi with meat? It could be your most favorite sushi. First, mix seasonings in the plastic bag with sake, soy sauce, sugar, grated ginger, and grated garlic. Mix well. Put the beef here. I was going to let this soak up the flavor and then pan fry it. But my husband had a suggestion. We decided to do low temperature cooking for this beef. Cooking at low temperature prevents flavor and juices from flowing out. Since protein denaturation in meat is suppressed, the original moisture and flavor of the food is retained. As a result, the food becomes tender and super tasty. Once again, remove air from the back slurry. Let's stand for 2 hours while maintaining the temperature of the water in the pot at 55 degree to 60 degree. When the temperature drops, turn the heat on for 10 to 20 seconds to warm it up. Then turn off the heat. It was difficult because it had to be warmed up every 3 minutes. My husband helped me. Cooking at low temperatures makes the steaks far better than simply pan frying, but it's a lot of work. If you have low temperature cooking equipment, that would be nice. You can also make a rare steak by simply grilling meat that has been marinated in the sauce mentioned earlier for 30 minutes. Cooking rice for sushi rice while the meat is cooking. Reduce the water a little because the vinegar will be mixed in later. After adding the required amount of water to 150 g of rice, I remove 2 tablespoons of water. Cook rice in rice cooker as usual. Once the low temperature cooking has been completed for 2 hours, remove the meat from the bag and pat dry. By the way, since the meat was thin this time, 2 hours is fine, but if the meat is thicker, it seems to need 3 hours. Finishing touches on the steak or the pan. Heat oil to high temperature over high heat and sear quickly. Remove from heat as soon as brown to prevent cooking inside. Wipe off excess oil. Prepare vinegar mixture for sushi rice here. Put rice vinegar, sugar, and salt. Warm it up a little in the microwave or in a saucepan. When rice is cooked, mix in vinegar. Once remixed, let's stand for 15 to 20 minutes to cool. Be sure to let the rice cool to human skin, as it's difficult to make sushi if it's not cooled. 
Finally, let's cut the beef. I was not very good at it. So my husband cut it into just the right size for sushi. I tried to eat the ends of the meat. I was surprised that it tasted even better than I had imagined. The meat was well seasoned. It was worth the effort of low temperature cooking. By the way, the meat is best when it's this thick. The other was too thin and the meat was cooked all the way to the center. It's best served with just a few green onions and grated ginger. Eat with a little soy sauce if you like. The last recipe is simmered chicken and daikon. The vegetables absorb the flavor of the chicken and become most delicious. In this case, daikon and carrots are used. If you don't have daikon, you can make it with potatoes and it will still be delicious. Carrots will be made into a flower shape. I have become better at this decorating than before. Add water to daikon and cook for 3 to 4 minutes. Meanwhile, prepare the ginger and chicken. Shred the ginger. Cut chicken into bite-sized pieces. Add ginger and chicken to boiling water. Lightly cook the chicken. And remove the scum. Season it with sake, mirin, soy sauce, sugar, and rice vinegar. You don't need to add vinegar, but if you add just a little bit, it's slightly sour and so tasty. Mix well and cook until ingredients are soft. After 5 minutes of simmering, remove the lid and reduce to a simmer. Be careful not to overcook as the flavor will become too strong. When it reaches the desired thickness, turn off the heat, top with mizuna and serve. It's also good to make a large quantity and store in the fridge for later use. <laughs> 